Every year, I generate hundreds of new SaaS ideas. I put a dozen of them to the test, and I launch at least one. So, how do I do this? Well, I'm here on the public street of the internet, and I use what we all have publicly available. In this video, I'll show you the exact framework I use to generate hundreds of potential SaaS ideas every year. First of all, if you're new to this channel, welcome here. I'm Simon, and I am what you would call a diversified entrepreneur. And one of the ways I've become that is by running a portfolio of small SaaS products instead of going all in on one big idea. In 2022, I launched my first product, FeedHive. Later that year, I launched LinkDrip. In 2023, I acquired a small tool called TinyKiwi, and again, later in 2023, I launched 8Base. These products are all bootstrapped, profitable, and driving revenue. But how do I succeed every time? Truth is, I don't. What you're seeing are the few ones that succeeded. Behind the scenes, I have been dabbling with hundreds of SaaS ideas. I've put at least a few dozens to the test, and in the end, only a few came out on the other side. And this is exactly what I recommend that you do. Don't go all in. Don't put all your money on red. Play a safe and diversified game. Now, let me show you the framework I use to generate hundreds of ideas for potential SaaS businesses. First of all, I'm a huge fan of building in already established markets. I want to build here on a busy internet street with tons of traffic. You don't need to innovate. You can simply build an alternative to a tool users already know, but build for users who are unsatisfied with the current solution. So how do we do that? Let's go to reddit.com. Go to the search bar on top and type in alternative to. Then hit enter. You're going to see a long list of posts where people ask alternative to tool. Now you want to do the following. Open every item that you find interesting or relevant. For every item, go explore the website of the tool in question. Now, read the Reddit post and find the reason why the user is looking for an alternative. Of course, not all posts are going to be relevant here. Some will be old and some will be very far from something you would know or even be interested in trying to solve. So we need to filter these a bit. For each of these posts, ask yourself the following questions. Is it viable for me to build an alternative? Be honest with yourself here. Don't commit to something way over the top. Stick to topics that you feel somewhat confident about getting into. Can I address the complaints the user is having? Again, be honest with yourself here. Sometimes lack of features is there for a reason. What the user is asking might simply not be viable to solve. Now, filter all your open tabs based on the above questions. Hopefully, you're left with one or two tabs open still. I got one here, a Myra alternative. Interesting. Now, before we go ahead and start setting up a Myra alternative, we might want to have a bit more than a single Reddit comment to base our tool on. In case you didn't know, G2 is a product review website. It's similar to Trustpilot, but they make a much bigger deal out of verifying the reviewers, which makes most reviews more relevant and actionable. This is exactly what we need. Let's head over to g2.com. In the search bar, let's type in the name of the product we're building an alternative for. We can now see all the reviews for this product. If we scroll down, we'll find a place that says sort by and pick lowest rated. That's right, we want to find more people who are unsatisfied with this product and we want to know what they dislike so we can explore if building an alternative is an option. Let's start looking through these reviews. Even though G2 makes a big deal out of verifying their reviewers, a lot of reviews are still fairly relevant. But once we start looking further, we'll find reviews like this one. Amazing, super valuable information here. The website gets laggy, it's hard to navigate, using the interface is difficult, and there's no way to revert changes back to a specific point in time. These are already really good clues. Ideally, we want to look for reviews that are recent, no older than three months. Specific, they should address specific pain points. Actionable, they should describe how the user would have wanted it instead. 
The goal is to find at least five to 10 additional reviews from people who are struggling with the platform and see if we can find some common patterns between them. And if they're all mentioning the same issues, we might have a potential SaaS idea. In this case, a more lightweight Miro alternative that's easier to use and runs much faster in the browser. Not bad. Now, let me just make something clear. Nothing can beat good qualitative research like the thing we're doing right here. It's boring, it's sometimes very tedious work, but as the founder, you should be doing this. That being said, a lot have changed on the streets of the internet recently. And we would be missing out if we didn't do this last thing. Let's visit the new building down the street. This is where things get really exciting. First, let's go find a Chrome extension called Go Full Page. This will allow you to take full page screenshots of any website. There we go. Now, let's take a screenshot of at least the first three full pages of bad reviews on D2. Like that. And if you want to, you can expand on this step. You can go search on Trustpilot, Captera, find Facebook reviews, anywhere on the internet where people have something to say about your product. At this step, we care a little less about the quality of the data, we just want a lot of it. Let's go and upload these images to ChatGPT. Next, we're gonna use this prompt. I'm not gonna read it all aloud, but I will leave it in the description so you can copy paste. Let's replace these. And there we go. Now, ChatGPT will take all of these reviews and output a very detailed business case and finish up with a very specific outline for a SaaS idea. Now, combine this with your own research that you did in step two, and you might actually have something very cool to work off from here. Now, before you rush into this new idea, let me give you a serious piece of advice. Wait a bit. Let the idea sit for a bit before making a move. Create a Notion doc. Add the idea to an idea database. Let a week or two pass. Then revisit it and see if you're still excited about working on it. In those two weeks, either one of two things will typically happen. You'll forget about it and start thinking about something else. Or your mind will keep going on and on about it. If it's one of these ideas you just can't seem to let go of, it might be a good candidate to take to the next level. And remember, you're a diversified entrepreneur. Even if it's a great idea, you still shouldn't bet everything on it. You should push this idea forward along with a series of other ideas. And for that, you need an entire SaaS factory. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build a SaaS factory step by step. Go watch that one now. See you over there.